Now I want to move on to this fellow named R.I., a schismatic from the southwest who claims to be one of the two witnesses of the apocalypse. He rejects the canonizations of the church. He's the one who really started to spread this idea that all of the traditional chapels are the equivalent of Protestant churches, meeting houses of heretics, because the group's leaders and priests and many of the people there do imbibe and hold and unfortunately are heretics. But he's wrong to equate them to non-Catholic churches simply because of the notoriety issue that they profess to hold all of Catholic teachings and they're not the same, they're qualitatively different from, in terms of their notoriety, a Protestant or a schismatic church. And so all of these attacks in these areas including the false accusation with regard to the salvation dogma and when people become heretics and schismatics stemmed from this individual. Also, all of the nonsense about abjurations that is floating around out there and has been adopted by countless individuals that you must draw up a specific abjuration for every error that will come up in this modernist apostasy. Otherwise, you are a heretic denying the necessity of an abjuration. And that's complete nonsense. They even accuse us of heresy on this issue because we convert people by providing them with the abjuration from the Council of Trent, which anathematizes all errors opposed to Catholic teaching. And we specifically also mention that people should include or mention if there was a particular dogma they denied. And so, this abjuration nonsense brings from this individual and other individuals who may not even agree with him on this point adopt his position on abjurations and are spreading it in their own version of it for instance one individual wrote to us that uh, the Trent profession is only for converts from Protestantism completely wrong it's not it's for converts from heresy and so all these false accusations about abjurations, canonizations, uh, when people become heretics, meeting houses of heretics, it all comes from the false theology of this individual who claims to be a prophet of the apocalypse. But in the last few years, while claiming to be a prophet of the apocalypse, has admitted that he was a heretic. That shows anyone with eyes to see that he's a false prophet. Claiming to be a prophet while admitting he's a heretic against the Catholic faith. He also falsely identified the, quote, other witness of the apocalypse, and I'm going to play the clip. He says that St. Thomas Aquinas is not only burning in hell, but he'd love to pull him out of hell, put his skin back on him, and then peel it off to torture him more. He calls St. Teresa of the Child Jesus not the little flower, but the big stinkweed. He thinks that she was a heretic as well. He says that St. Pius V was uh, not a canonized saint and on and on and on and I'm gonna play these clips and we actually had an individual leave our community he was here for over two years he made initial vows after two years he made simple vows after two years a total supporter as in fact many of our readers called up here and spoke with him and they can attest to that because he directed them to certain positions and helped with our work he knew everything we stood on all the issues and we're going to have another audio which discusses this issue but one day in the year 2007 this individual who was in our community came across the writings of this R.I. and he had been familiar with our refutations of him before that but he started to look into this guy's stuff and it was almost like he was spiritually taken over and I believe that's what happened he was spiritually taken over and he changed his whole opinion his whole religious view left our monastery and is now one of our biggest enemies and when explaining to us his decision to leave he told us that he came to this conclusion in one day after reading this guy's writings and so I want to play and expose this individual R.I. to show what spirit is moving not only his decision to leave our monastery and adopt this new distorted view of everything but also all these other schismatics. Even those who don't claim to agree with R.I., they are actually his spiritual children in Satan. And so I'm going to play a number of clips from this individual and comment on them, and here's the first one. 
Yeah, at one time, Brother Mario thought he was the witness. And one time I thought he was. I was duped. That was one of the times I was duped by the devils. When the Caspars called me out, it's a long story. And obviously, the devil's going to go along and try to discredit my mission by putting somebody in front of me who I think is a witness. He's not a witness, you know? So there's his admission that he falsely identified <clears throat> an individual as the other witness of the apocalypse. And he now admits he is not. Here's another clip reasserting that he is, quote, a prophet and has, quote, the authority of Moses. I am the one. Secondly, I do have the same authority Moses had. I ask you, where did Moses get his authority from? There was nobody to lay hands on him. There was nobody on earth to say Moses is now second in charge. Where did the judges get their authority in the time of the judges when there was no hierarchy? Where did they get their authority? God gave it to them directly and proved it through their preaching, through their way of life, and through miracles. And so, he claims to have the authority of Moses, and thus have the authority of God. And so, essentially, he is proclaiming himself the head of his own church. That's obvious. He would deny it. That's just a fact. And what's interesting is that the Protestants said the same thing. John Calvin claimed to be God's prophet. Okay, he was the head of the, the church in his area. That is not to suggest that anyone who claim, has claimed to be a prophet in history is a sect creator, but when you see them creating new doctrines, new obligations, excommunicating every single person, almost literally, who doesn't fall in line with all of their ridiculous views, then you see that you truly have a sect creator. Further, this individual, and this has been confirmed, we've received letters, I don't know if he publicly circulates this, but he excommunicates people, he penalizes people, he actually issues like ecclesiastical penalties against people in his little community. Here's a clip in which he threatens to kill someone who doesn't agree with his sect. There are many clips like that I'm going to play. When God killed Kor and, and sent them down to hell alive, was that uncharitable? When Moses killed 23,000 Jews at the bottom of Mount Sinai, was that uncharitable? No, it was the will of God. When you come into God's home and threaten the work that's being done here, where the Catholic Church is being restored, and you've come so close to us and lived with us for so long and become a Judas, you're going to get what Judas got. And God's going to give it to you, and I'll give it to you too if I have to. And I will say, Bill, when you said I wouldn't have no shred of emotion, I would have a shred of emotion. I would rejoice, and I would dance, and I would sing. And I told him about his own wife. If, we, if they were under our... Now, I quoted that. Obviously, what God did was not uncharitable. But the point here is that anyone who doesn't agree with this schismatic and his little Protestant community, he's ready to kill. Here's another quote in which he's threatening to kill someone who doesn't agree with him. Down and ate them, never saying a word. Well, who got the noodles? She did. Who put the mustard on top? She did. And it wasn't even mustard, it was cheese. They act like Sister Jane went over and said, Eat noodles, and I'm going to throw mustard on it. Do it now. See, Kyle. You know? Ah, oh, what? Are you kidding me? That is an abomination. I'll kill you for that alone. For that lie. For that gross lie after what we've done for you. How dare you say such a thing as that? All the three peoples. Here's another quote in which he makes reference to imposing a penance on someone and that the penance he would give this person would be to eat rat crap. This is disgusting. This is amongst people who lived amongst us. That she went over there and said, now eat these noodles, and I'm going to throw some mustard on. She picked the noodles. It wasn't mustard. It was cheese, and she put it on top. Okay, you satisfied, Joe, that you needed to hear this before you know all the rest of the trash in here? He's been living here. He sees how we're all equally cared of when it comes to what we eat and what we drink. That is filthy. That is filthy, filthy lies. And, folks, I send you a picture of her. She's even overweight. So if we weren't feeding her, what is, what is she eating? Next thing they're going to say, we would have her eat rats out there or something. You know what I told her for her penance? She's going to eat rat crap on a plate. And I wanted to eat it. Now you're going to get it. Here's another quote 
in which he speaks of imposing a penance upon someone in which they would be required to blow the brains out of a cat. ...between loving animals and idolizing animals. She idolized cats. I told her part of her penance if she ever repented and converted, if she ever really does, because she didn't sign this letter. If she, if she approves this letter, she's doomed. But her, one of her actual repentance was, we're going to go get a cat, and we're going to put a forty-five in her hand, we're going to point it at the cat's brains and tell her to pull the trigger and blow the brains out of that cat. Uh, like uh, Abraham offered up Isaac, his own beloved son, because he maybe was loving his son a little more than God, let alone, that would be part of repentance, to blow the brains of a cat out. Just make sure she's not analyzing cats. Here's another quote in which he and his followers talk about killing the people who don't like their community. It's in pride in it. Ask yourself, why not? Blasphemy. Where, where's the blasphemy? Where's the blasphemy? Did I say she is Mary? Did I say I am God? Uh, even to think this. To even put that down right there. He was right here, right now. That's right. That's, you better that's believe it. So insulting and it just, it's, it's it's disgusting, and, and, and because these people, because these people don't want to be saintly. All right. Okay. Because he, he says, why would a prophet of God, a righteous man of God, blaspheme God and His holy mother, as well as calumniate and slander fellow brethren at the very place where he recites mass prayers and other Catholic prayers and acts of devotion? Okay. Bill should. Bill's lucky he didn't live in a day. No, he'd be dead in a month, really. I, I'd lock him up. He would be locked up. And, if he was under my charge, I'd lock him up. Because of what he did here on bread and water, I'd have, we all pray for him. We'd have a uh, priest go down here every day, ask him for his confession. At the end of the month, we'd have a priest going right up to him until he goes up to the gibbet before we burn him. And then we would say, you have one last chance to confess. Whether he does or he doesn't, we're going to kill him either way. And that's what would happen if I had power over him. But you watch what God's going to do to him. And the rest that signed this letter. And any of us have consents to this stuff. Here's the clip in which he speaks of St. Thomas in hell and his desire to drag him out of hell, put skin back on him, and torture him. That is so... I, I, folks, I, I don't even want to go off on it right now so much because that gets me so righteously angry that if I can drag Thomas and everybody that believed that up from the pits of hell and peel his, put skin on him and peel his skin and pour vinegar over it, and, but he's suffering, believe me, more than I can ever do anything to him right now. But that is such an insult against God. It's such an attack against Almighty God. It is so, so wicked and vile. Certainly, St. Thomas Aquinas was not infallible, contrary to what many heretics in our day assert. He was a saint and doctor of the church, but he was not immune from all doctrinal errors. But to assert that he was a heretic, and that he was a vile heretic, is to assert nothing other than that the Catholic Church has defected. For not only has the Catholic Church canonized him and raised him up for universal veneration, it's proclaimed him a doctor of the Church, but also many different popes have approved and praised his teaching, such as Pope Leo XIII, St. Pius V, and Pope Pius XI even had a whole encyclical called Studiorum Ducium, recommending and approving on St. Thomas and his teaching. So there's no way around the argument that if you hold what he holds, then you have to hold that Pope Pius XI was a heretic, and all the other popes who recommended what he considers to be a vile and disgusting and luciferian heretic whereas we correctly point out that St. Thomas was not infallible, but he did, he was not free from all errors, contrary to what some think, but he was not a heretic. But this shows the evil spirit behind this guy. Like the Protestants, he has to cast down the saints. Furthermore, the Catholic Church, according to R.I., would have to be nothing more than a sect which raises up the most vile heretics for imitation. Now, those were just a few of the quotes. I think people get the idea, but in addition, this fellow believes that St. Teresa of the Child Jesus is a heretic in hell. St. Pius V is not an actual saint. Dogmas have exceptions. Canonizations are not infallible. Baptism of desire is acceptable, but everyone who recognizes Benedict XVI as a pope, even if he hasn't seen his heresies, is not a Catholic and a host of other errors. But the point is that 
the attacks on us and a lot of these radical schismatics who have gone too far to the right, okay, um, and become schismatics, have done so because they've sort of imbibed the spirit of this guy. And in fact, we had a guy in our, in our community who basically almost, you know, was couldn't have been almost a stronger supporter. Um, told us he was really happy here and was here for a few years. And he read this guy's writings and his attacks, you know, and things like that, and his distortions, because he'll mix in some Catholic truths with his lies. And if a person isn't of the right spirit and, and isn't protected, he could be misled. And he was basically, like, spiritually taken over. He went from being, you know, one of the strongest supporters we could have, and in our community, he left the community... And now, and in within one day, he actually told us that within one day, he completely changed his opinion about everything and was our like our biggest enemy. And so I just wanted to play that to show the spirit behind this radical schismatic uh, movement, which is small, but there are all kinds of little guys popping up who are holding variations of these false positions. And, um, you know, this is where it stems. And some of the main theological errors at the heart of it.